Development in Ecuador has been a collective journey. You know. It was a matter of taking what was seen a, as a backward country, as a, as a backward nature, and even as a backward population, and uh, make it uh, European or Occidental. Spain, it's seen as a, as a stepping stone or, or as an alternative. Everyone tells me, we want to go to the United States. That's the dream. It's seen as an alternative, as if, if you cannot go to the United States because it's too costly or because it's easier for you to go to Spain because you have family there. It's seen as an alternative. And it, this has also to do with this notion of, of development, of Eurocentric development, in which there's a, a clear hierarchy of, a geographical hierarchy of countries. So it's not only because of wages, but the UK is seen as a more civilized country. Germany is seen as a more civilized country. So people arrive to Spain, but they are always looking for alternatives to go elsewhere. The Spanish government and, and Spanish officials usually promote Latin American uh, immigration because what they call uh, cultural affinities. But in reality, this cultural affinity is, is also a sense that Latin America is within the Spanish sphere of influence. So it's, in a sense, it's a bit more than a cultural affinity, it's a sense of ownership in a way. There is this this colonial relationship is still very strong. In Ecuador also, there's a lot of, of racism and a lot of this colonial relationship between uh, white people or mestizo people with the Indians or with... There's not a clear-cut division. So you can be a mestizo or an Indian in one setting and be white or mestizo in another setting. So ethnicity is very much linked with, with, your, with your economic position. So with the crisis, the middle classes that are mestizo are also threatened in what they see as an ethnic regression. You see, they, they can fall into the, an Indian state because development in general in Ecuador is related with that. It's, it has a very ethnic component. It's development is about going from Indian to European. And that's one of the conflicts that migration brings, because personal development in Ecuador is, uh, as I say, is linked with living the Indian condition. And when people arrive here, they are seen as Indians because of ethnic, racial perceptions of, of people here and also because they are allocated to jobs which in Ecuador are destined to Indian people. When they are professionals, they don't see themselves as Indians anymore. So if you have a lawyer that perhaps his grandfather was an Indian, but through education, through a, changing of, of dwelling, of changing of clothes, has become a mestizo person. When this person that maybe uh, for generations have, uh, has been quitting the Indian condition, arrives here, he's put again into the Indian condition because of, of this colonial gaze, because of uh, where he's seen uh, fitting in, in the labor market, and so on. Nobody knows for sure, but it's estimated that around 2 million Ecuadorians live abroad. That is about 17%. <laughs> well, most people is, is in the United States. 
figures in Spain are very difficult to establish and in Europe in general because most of the, of the population is undocumented and because people move so much also people don't stay in Spain necessarily but they go to France or go to, to the UK so some people say they are, there are 600,000 Ecuadorians in Spain What is interesting in migration is that you see the effects of migration through remittances and through the house that the neighbor built or the car that he buys, but you don't see the effort is completely invisibilized. You can perform denigrating jobs, socially denigrating jobs, uh, that, that are seen as denigrating in Ecuador without being seen. and arrive with the, with the results. In Ecuador there's a saying that is nobody is a whore in his own village. And I think that that uh, works well also with other kinds of jobs. You cannot perform that in Ecuador, but you can perform it elsewhere. And at the same time acquire social prestige back home. Usually you find a lot of people from one small village in Ecuador in another small village in Spain, for instance. Yes, and, and people know each other because they, they draw their own people. But also it's interesting that migration turns around uh, a lot of these hierarchies and all, all of these power relations. In gender you see that, in terms of gender. Because for women, for instance, it's much more easy to get a job, it's much easier to get a job in, in Spain or in Europe as a domestic, while men have it more difficult. And many times you find women that come first here and that they then bring their family and men are being maintained by their wives. This causes a lot of conflict for men. Women become more independent because of this access to job and because it is seen as part of migration that women become more, more independent, they go out more. So this causes a lot of problems to Ecuadorian men. Of course, migration is going to affect a lot uh, Ecuadorian society. It's not going to remain the same after migration. There is more willingness to go back in men than in women. And I think that is in part because of this, because they think that when they go back, things are going to return to, to normality. And also these remittances will change a lot the relationship between the state and the people. And I think that in, in this last event in Ecuador, you, you've seen that people are much more reliant on, on themselves, I think. Before the state was seen as a source of security and a source of, of, of everything, really. Now people are, uh, are challenging that, I think. And that's, in a way, what has daily legitimized politicians and the state. Because of its control of oil, on the one hand, and secondly, because of its articulation of global markets to exports and imports. The state and the elites controlled all the sources of income in Ecuador. And this is being challenged by immigration because remittances go from the worker abroad to the family without intervention of the state. But it's going to affect very paternalistic relationship that the state and the elites had with the rest of the population.